G'day, Hugh here from videsign.com.au, a design company based on the Gold Coast in Australia, and welcome to my second tutorial. In my first tutorial, we took a very dull and flat image, took it into Lightroom, and transformed it into an okay looking image. But today, we're going to take that image that we transformed in Lightroom, put it into Photoshop, and make it even better. So let's do that. Okay, so in our last tutorial we created this image from a flat image and we did that through Lightroom which you can see here is the original image that we worked on and we managed to change it into that which I've now brought across into Photoshop. So you can see it's the same image, it looks pretty good but we can improve this image by doing a couple of simple things in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got this file open here. It's a bit Sunday photo. It's got the sky, it's got the horizon, it's got the water, and it's got sand. So if we come over here and choose this tool, the move tool, and we click in the image and drag it up to this image that we're working on and then just drop it in, we now have layer one on top of our image that we're going to be working on. Now we have to transform it to uh, bring it into a similar size. Uh, not to worry about it, it's a lot smaller, but uh, it, it's, kind of, it's because it's a sky based process, it's not too much of an issue. So Control T, uh, free transforms it, put it up into the corner there, hold Shift down so it doesn't lose its perspective, and we just make it a, a fair bit bigger. Now, what we want to do is hit Enter and then go up here to our opacity and change that to sort of around 50% so we can get a bit of an idea of what's going on. And we want the horizon of this new picture to match up with the horizon of our existing picture. Now, we put that in there, but we need obviously a lot more size to this. So we can control T again and then hold shift down and bring up the size of the photo and then move the horizon back down to the right spot. So it's in line with our current horizon, a little bit more of an adjustment, back down again, and we're just about right, we've got horizon, we've got water, we've got sand. Hit enter, to commit that transformation, and now we have this layer 1 on top of our background image, which we can do some work with. So come up to the lasso tool. Now, normally, well, often you just only have to do this once, but we're going to have to do this twice because there's a gap here uh, between the bottom of this stand and the the horizon. Um, so we're going to have to do it in two lots. So we'll start off with this one and just roughly lasso around the solid area, the non-sky area of this uh, stand. Now we don't have to be precise, but just uh, choose it choose all these sort of areas in here that are not part of the sky. Now, with that selected, come up to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur, we want it to be about 150 pixels. Say OK to that, and that blurs that. Control D will deselect, and now we want to do the rest, which is along the horizon here, don't worry about his head, come all the way across, all the way down, all the way around, and back up again. Again, just choose the same blur, which is the Gaussian blur of 150. Now that's blurred a lot of these non-sky aspects of the photo. Now, with this layer still selected, we want to change it to a multiply. And that's done what it does. Multiply is an amazing effect that you can get from a layer, a blending effect. So what we want to do now is uh, actually start making this photo look better. So what we do is we put a layer on top, uh, put a mask on top of the layer. So it's a white mask, which means we need this to be black if we're going to reveal elements of the underlying layer. So we choose the, the brush tool. Now we probably want to make it around about 400, 3 to 400. and probably around 50% capacity. Keep flow at 100 and uh, 
Then we want to paint in aspects of the underlying layer that we want to reveal. So we just go ahead and do that, just, um, especially with this lifeguard thing. But uh, don't worry about the ocean to begin with. We want to look at that in a minute. But to begin with, we will get the sand. We'll get the the cement here. Just need to reattach my microphone. Uh, yeah, and we want uh, the bike obviously to look good. We just. Uh, all that back in and uh, just work on this this stand here which um, we can start to bring back some of this color and detail and what we can do is we can bring the brush down to a smaller size and get more specific about what we're doing right in amongst the grooves here now if you do go over like I have done there not a big deal. We can easily come back and rectify that. A lot of time you can just paint back in and it's a really good job. It's a, it's a nice feeling when you start to reveal these images and they come back to life again. So we can just uh, yeah, paint back in a few different spots that uh, you want to get a bit of colour into sleeping person there, there's a bit of shadow under there, a bit in the beach. Now because we've gone over a few spots here, we wanna we do want to fix them up. Before we do that we'll just paint a bit more in here. Okay, so we've gone over a bit. So we've got a white mask and we've got black is revealing. So if we want to paint backwards we just switch the colour palette from black on top, white on bottom, to the opposite, white on top, black on bottom and then we can just paint back in the blue sky just do that through different spots where you think it might look a bit like there's a bit of a glow right, now I haven't done anything with the ocean yet so I'll just come back here I don't mind a little bit of a glow around the edges, but you don't want it to be glowing like a beacon. Just uh, add a bit more in there. Right, with the ocean, I'm going to change the opacity, I'm going to switch this back, and then we change the opacity to about 25%, and then we just paint this back in here. Why the lower opacity? Well, we want to retain a little bit of the brilliant blue because this was quite a dull blue because it was a cloudy and dull day. If we just give it a little bit of work over, but it's still, still got a bit of blue to it. So we've uh, managed to go this far. Now you can see here, you can zoom in on this guy's head. He has got the line going through it. So we come back up to the brush and make it a lot smaller, maybe even a little bit smaller than that. And we want to put the opacity right up at around 70%. And we just can brush away any of those lines. So he's back to his normal self. See on the bit of the bin there. head and his back. Right, so then we fit screen there. So we've gone from this to this. Quite a different scene, totally different day. Now I don't mind doing a little bit of uh, work on the underlying image so we can do a little bit of work on the uh, colour balance. Put it up a bit. Put a little bit of magenta into it. And uh, cyan. Make it very summery. Like a really nice day. And uh, 
can also just do a bit of work on the brightness and contrast, just put a bit of contrast in there, make it a little bit uh, darker. Okay. Now, what we, we've set up this really brilliant blue sky, but um, down here is a bit dull because it was actually dull. So we can come down into the image and we can choose the uh, sponge tool and have, make sure saturate is selected. And we can actually paint in a bit of saturation here and getting it looking more like the sun's out. And it doesn't might matter if you go into the water a bit too. It brings out some of that blueness in the water. So paint in that. Now you've also got um, the ability to satur saturate some of this, this lifeguard stand as well. And that's really... I mean it, it's a bit soft around the edges there. It would have been nicer to have taken this photo with a tripod. I didn't as I explained in the last tutorial but it's still it's got the elements there I mean uh, if you were to take this photo with a tripod and a remote it would even be much much better so we got, um, we got the burn tool and the dodge tool I wouldn't mind burning some of these images some of this image uh, just around sort of around there give it a bit of burn them in there out on the beach really gives a hot summer feel now it might be a little bit a little too much so we can um, come here and dodge it up a bit so it's not too too intense a little bit of a light now, a bit under there, a bit there, and maybe a little bit in here, and here, and there. Okay, so now look at this image. This is amazing. We started with this, and we are now sitting here like that. So not the best image to begin with, but certainly an improvement on something that was taken on a very gloomy, boring, dull day. We now have a very beachy, summery looking photo. It could be anywhere in the world, and it does say Gold Coast on there, but it could be uh, any beach, ocean, sunny sort of day. So that's all for this tutorial. I may bring this one into another one um, next time. Depending on how things go, I think this could still have a little bit more work, work done on it. But at this stage, I'm happy with the way this looks. So until next time, thank you for watching.